In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you a shortcut method on how to move your time indicator or your playhead left and right across your timeline. This is especially helpful as your project becomes longer or more complicated. Oftentimes what we do is we simply take the mouse and we drag it to find that spot we're looking for. I'd like to show you some ways to speed up that process and make it much more efficient. So in this project that we have on the screen, I have my timeline right here at uh, 1 minute and 23 seconds. Now normally what we know we can do is we can move up ahead into the preview screen and click the little button that says next frame or the button that says previous frame or we can use the comma key or the period key to do the same. And if I click on the button right here, I see my frame indication uh, increments by one. So I can move one frame at a time forward or backward across my project. But you can do a lot more than that. Let me show you what else you can do. I'm going to click on the area between the arrows and this opens up other options. If I click on second, now frame is our default. If I click on second and now I click, my icons have changed. And if I click to the right or use the period key again or the comma key, I can use the same keys. Now it moves, if we see it, our time indicator, one whole second at a time. And whether my project is 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second, it will move an entire second each time I do that or press the period key or the comma key. So that's another way to improve what we have in our motion of our time indicator. Let me click on that again. The next one is minute. And again, I can use the keys or I can use the icon. Now it's moving one minute at a time through my project. The next option I have is scene. Now notice that scene here is grayed out. When you create scenes, within a clip, you have to highlight the clip. I don't have a clip highlighted here. If I highlight this clip here, and now I have the option of scene available, and it will move between the scenes of that particular clip, again, when I press the keys or click here. So I have several scenes that I have embedded in this clip. Now, there is no such thing as a scene track. The scenes you will see if you have already split something in your media room into scenes. If I click here on the folder, that tells me I have scenes. And here are my three scenes within the folder. And we have lessons on how to uh, break a clip up into scenes and how to use those independent of one another or use them together. But if a clip does not have scenes to it, and this one does not over here, I can click on it, but if I click on the, the option here, the Seek By tool, I click on Scene, but there is no scene to go to in this particular one. I go right and I go left and I just go to the beginning and end of the clip uh, because this one has not been split into scenes as this one has down here. So if it's grayed out, it most likely means you just don't have any scenes that you've broken that clip up into. The next one is subtitle, and I've enlarged my tracks on the left to see that I have three subtitles here, and I can use either the same two keyboard keys, the period key and the comma key, or I can click on the icons, and it will move from one su subtitle. I've done uh, Lord of the Rings, Gandalf, or back to Bilbo, or over to Frodo. And even if the track is not visible, let me right click here and we'll, we'll turn off the subtitle track. It will still move between those three subtitles, whether the track is visible or not, which is a nice feature. The next option is chapter. And here again, I've assigned some chapters here in my chapter track, and I can use the period key, comma key, or the 
the icons in the preview screen to move between the three chapters that I've identified in my project so far. Again, if I click and I, and I make the chapter invisible, the chapter track, I can still move and, assign, and it still recognizes the location of the chapters. So those two tracks, whether they're visible or not, uh, is, is not conditional on whether I see that particular information. So we'll go ahead and go back here. So we can move different ways. The last one is segment. And segment, I found, was not defined very clearly in the PowerDirector literature. And I found this behavior to be a little bit confusing. If I don't have any clips highlighted, and I've chosen segment, and I move, it moves between my chapters, chapter 1, 2, and 3. But if I have any clip highlighted to start with, and I click on the segment option, and now I go left or right, it moves between my clips. So now it moves here to the end of this clip, to the beginning of that clip. So if I want to move quickly between clips, uh, I, I simply have to highlight one first and then set it for segment, and then it will move between the clips. But those are some of the quick ways in which you can move your playhead or current time indicator between different sections of your project rather than simply dragging it and hoping you find the location you're looking for very quickly. It's a nice shortcut in CyberLink PowerDirector.